12 football presented by Tire Pros at Autzen Stadium this afternoon. The Duck fans are here hoping Oregon gets that first home conference win. They host the Cougars of Washington State, a team they had a very competitive game with last year in Pullman. And we welcome you to Eugene. Glenn Parker, Ted Robinson, Jill Savage with us on the field. So, Glenn, the interesting twist today is how many quarterbacks will play for the Ducks? Yeah, you know, we think, probably expect to see two, maybe even three quarterbacks. Uh, I think it's obvious that when you watch the film, Vernon Adams gives them the best chance to win when he's healthy. He's the most complete quarterback. We remains to be seen if we see him, but whoever is there, they're going to have to run this offense well against the Cougs to get to get on. We saw him, as you just did a short while ago, warming up, which was a little bit of a surprise. So Oregon has told us they'll play at least two today. That will happen. No matter what, with the uncertainty they've had at the quarterback position, Glenn, what a strength to fall back on Royce Freeman. Yeah, it, it, Royce Freeman is, is the rarity in college football. He is a complete back. Uh, he can catch the ball out of the backfield, but it's, it's the way he runs this system. We all know the zone read by now, the read on the backside. Watch Freeman, though. It's the one cut and the explosiveness. But the thing about him is he's elusive as well. So he's a guy that can make people miss, but he doesn't mind running it over. Now, this is a beautiful pull. you got to tackle. He has to scratch a match off his right tackles. But cheek, he does it, gets in tight, and Royce Freeman exploits it and then looks to take, to take control. An absolute beast of a bat. Tough week for the Cougars to go back-to-back. -back. Berkeley last week. Eugene this week, but Luke Falk held up pretty well in the matchup with Goff last Saturday. Uh, when, when Luke Falk has time to throw, he is deadly accurate, and he, he knows this system. And, and one of the things you talk about with the, the Mike Leach quarterbacks is you plug them in, but there's certain things that make them great within the system. Luke Falk is starting to become that guy. It's They needed a big win. They needed a win to get their program back on track, and they got it in Rutgers. But this is indicative of the entire system. River Craycraft right there in the circle. Luke Falk. Watch how River keeps his hands up and gets to that second window. But also the way that Luke Falk knew he was going to get there and finds it. That's the next level in this offense. It's not simply pitch and throw the ball where it has to be. It's understanding where the holes are going to open up. And for Oregon, they understand that pass defense will get a severe challenge today from a team that's throwing the ball. The Cougars almost three quarters of their plays from scrimmage. The biggest storyline in this game could potentially be the Washington State passing offense going up against the Oregon secondary. No secret, they are the worst in the conference so far this year. I talked to defensive backs coach John Neal. He said he still feels good about this group, and he said each game is an evaluation. You can see what they've done so far this season, but reinforcement could be on the way. Charles Nelson was warming up with the secondary. Now he practiced with them in the spring and he has not done so since then. So maybe a little help down here in the secondary. Mark Helfrich told me yesterday the problem is confidence and experience. No one has that traditional cornerback mentality where they just say, I am going to beat you every play, Ted. That's going to be a big test for this Oregon defense today. Well, you know why, you just saw why Jill is so smart. She's fully prepared. So we're expecting rain during the game today and wind. Quite a bit of wind here already after a very sunny morning. Matt Wogan to kick off for the Ducks. That's what Wogan has done well. He's eliminated the return this year. He's put on almost 70% of his kickoffs have been touchbacks. Oregon wearing its uniform de Saman this week. You French students know what I'm talking about as we see our Reese's perfect combination of these pair Cougar receivers. Yeah, you've got River Craycraft in the slot. He's that kind of that go-to guy when you need to play. And, and Marks is the guy, the explosive one, the guy that you get the ball and it's yards after catch, it's big plays with him. That's your Reese's perfect combination. Really thing to look at, Ted, is can the Ducks get pressure with their front four? And they start, the Cougs do, with two running backs, Jamal Morrow and Keith Harrington. They both leak out. But Falk goes middle of the field. That's where he's made his living so far. Great craft on the catch, but Falk has thrown about three quarters of his throws so far between the hash marks. Between the hash marks, 10 yards down the field, that, that next level throw. It was interesting watching Washington State play their game at Berkeley last week. It looked like Falk and Gabe Marks back this year had a real connection and a lot of trust that Falk had that Marks could make big plays. Flaring this one out to Gerard Wicks. And he got extra yards. Boy, the Ducks did not tackle there in the flat, and Wicks ran that ball to the Oregon 46. 
Tyson Coleman pushed him to the sidelines but couldn't tackle him, and that wound up being a nine-yard game. I think the, the Cougar coaches felt when they left that Cal game, they left a win on the table. They felt they were there were plays to be made, and they could have won that game. So they're getting more confidence week to week, this, this Cougar team. So here again, Washington State, which does a lot of four wide receivers here, starting a couple of downs with two running backs and actually trying to run the ball and getting the first down. And getting almost 10 on the carries, Jamal Morrow. He takes it to the Oregon 36. On the left side of that Cougar line, Joe Dole, Gunnar Eklund, the better part of that group. They've got experience. They get just enough of that edge. Good blocking out on the edge by your wide receiver. And the Cougs can run the ball. They just don't commit to it. And now Washington State goes the other way. Five receivers. No backs. Only five to block. So Oregon, you'll see there, only three to rush. Depending on the cover. And Falk misfires trying to go to the far side to Tavares Martin. And, and, you know, obviously game plan for Washington State was come out with some running backs, maybe get a defensive matchup you liked. But then when you go empty the way they just did, you, you brought it up. The Ducks only rush three. Drop people back into those lanes where they like those mesh throws to go. Tyler Baker now in the game as a slot receiver left. Jamal Morrow, the running back. Fox got a man down the sideline. It is Morrow inside the Oregon 10. Very nice throw and a little wheel. Yeah, it happens often. Out of the backfield, wheel routes get lost. And they, your flat defender bypasses them. Your second level defender gets sucked into the inside. And there's a big window to throw into. And he found him. Yeah, Glenn, that was nice. He got that ball just high enough to get it over Joe Walker. 28-yard play, and it's first and goal. All the time. Finds his man. Is that Marks? Touchdown, Cougars. Well, again, Oregon only rushed three. And Falk used the time to find Gabe Marks. Second window, top of your screen. Marks comes under, and because the defense has pulled up for the drag route that opened that second window back there for marks well that is a most impressive first drive by the cougars and luke falk they go 75 on just eight plays and powell adds the extra point the ducks the cougs ducks in for a long day if they allow luke falk to complete these passes <laughs> of the wind, the ball being held in a very short kick, forcing Oregon to cover the ball. Obviously a free ball, and it is covered, taken just shy of the 30-yard line by Braylon Addison. There is the Washington State 76 drive summary. Efficient. They came out running the ball, then started the little dink and dunk, finding their guys, and six of seven for 65 yards with that TD pass, wrapping things up for Luke Falk. So it's Jeff Locke who will open the game as the Ducks quarterback. Fourth year in the Oregon program from Alamo, California. In the East Bay of the Bay Area, pitching to Freeman. And Freeman breaking. Freeman breaking. Freeman may go. Nope, out of bounds. Out of bounds back just shy of the Cougar 40. This is what we talk about with Freeman. He's got the speed. He can run you over, but he's also elusive. He makes one guy miss and another guy hit the ground and runs through an arm tackle. This guy, complete, he is so much fun to watch from a, a football standpoint. And so the Ducks trying to answer the Cougars quick first strike. And play action going to Addison. And Addison popped to the turf, but he's inside the 20. Taylor Taliulu on the Cougar tackle. I think he could have gone over the top to Devin Allen if he had wanted. Beautiful throw by, by Lockheed. He had either guy open that he wanted. So 16-yard game, and the Ducks have come right back to the red zone. This is Griffin. 
Oh, he took a good hit racing up there from the back end. That was Luani out of the safety position for the Cougars. Get a look. That's, you know, fantastic job first off. Your backer, Peyton Pallur, comes up and takes it on with the correct shoulder, takes the pulling lineman on with the correct shoulder. Now it's easy. You force that run into your help. Griffin, of course, had a big run in Boulder last week. Couple of breakouts. This is Addison. Well, but there's two Cougs there to defend. And now Oregon's in the same spot Washington State was. Third down in the red zone. Falk delivered with a touchdown pass to Marks. We'll see what the Ducks can do here on third down from the nine. Of course, they can get a first. I think also, you know, this is a different Ducks team in that they can't count on that defense getting that big stop. So they have to, it, it might not always be four downs for them here. Maybe the philosophy changes. Charles Nelson on a play fake. It's lucky. And a throw behind Griffin and incomplete. That was going to be tough first down get with Allison on the tail and instead now Oregon's going to have to send the field goal team out I think in years past we might have you know certainly last year might have seen them go for a, a, a fourth and four right there <laughs> Glenn the previous head coach he'd go on fourth and 400 wouldn't he yeah he he, <laughs> he, he was going on fourth yeah but this is the first drive of the game. This is smart to get points. And Aiden Schneider drills it through from 26 yards. So both offenses clicking, but the Cougars get the better of the first possession. A beautiful bright sun. It was in the 80s here yesterday. Bright sunny morning today. Now the overcast has come through. Again, we're expecting rain, although none so far. Just a brief moment of rain during warm-ups. As Wogan blasts another touchback All right, first down now Fox swings it out to Harrington Harrington out of st. Petersburg Florida first year playing for the Cougars I would think uh, if you're Washington State you take that all day Glenn you're gonna man up on marks yeah you you're gonna man on marks you're gonna you're gonna jump everything underneath that gives me a lot of space to get marks out there Down the sideline, air mails it too high, intended for Dom Williams. There you see the targets, and again, he and Mark seemed, especially last week, to have something. Last year, we saw how Craycraft emerged, and especially with Halliday, how they developed an incredible partnership. Yeah, and you know, the, talking about how this this offense. It evolves, and as guys get on the same page and they get used to working together, they start seeing the same things. And when that happens, then you, that's when you get the bigger plays, and, and you find them be, a guy getting targeted a lot more than another guy. Now the Duck fans trying to urge its defense on to get a three and out here. They rush four. Falk gets hit. Incomplete pass. So there's some pressure and a hit. Henry Mondo got into to hit Falk. Well, Mondo is a good good job bull rushing the outside edge of that tackle and the the thing is with Luke Luke Falk if you can get pressure if you can hit him that's the second time they put a pretty good shot on him today either short his arm or make him move his feet he's not nearly as accurate so Braylon Addison back to receive the punt of what it's a complete miss hit just flat missed that ball Zach Charmy and the Ducks are going to get the ball near midfield. Devin Allen. And he gets outside for a first down. See, that, that's the type of throw, that's the type of play concept you've got to have right now because you haven't thrown down the field very effectively. And so they can load up against the run. So if you can get something like that going, loosen that defense a little bit, that'll get that run game opened up even more. Addison motioning right. Lockie comes underneath to Freeman. Look at the space. Nobody near him. And Freeman's inside the 10. Lockie took a big shot on that play. He is 
visibly uh, in pain right there. Jeremiah Allison, you see them. He, he was the free runner. A, a very, Lockie's coming off. A fact. very good, yeah. clean hit, but that, that yeah. was... He's in an exposed position. As they were running down here inside the 10, Lockie turned. He was looking at the sideline. I think he was looking to tell Mark Helfrich, hey, I need a minute here. So Taylor Alley will come on here to try to finish this quick drive. Alley with the keeper. Well, his legs are awfully good. And Taylor Alley... With the read, faked it to Freeman and keeps it for the Ducks touchdown. Now that's Oregon football. 90 seconds to score a touchdown. The zone read. We, you, you talk about option football. That was option football. You option a guy. You don't block him. He makes the mistake. You get the t touchdown. That's the Ducks trying to see if they can catch Washington State. Now we'll line up for Schneider to kick the point. And so Oregon takes full advantage of a major field position swing on a short punt. You see they pull the big right guard. Get him around. That's Cameron Hunt. Get him around. And you follow it in because the defense has bitten hard on the fake. The zone read run game with the run pass option off of it has changed the landscape in college football. It's it's taken defenses have figured out triple option. They had started figuring out the veer and pistol option. It was just a new way to op play option football, and it's defenses still struggle. As much as they've seen it, they struggle with it still. Again, you can see the effect of the wind on the field as the kickoff is held. And Logan just smacks one over the Tavares Martin head for another touchback. Yeah. Falk comes underneath. That's Kyron Priester in his first catch today. A nice job of Luke Falk coming to his third option. You know, he, he, he looked at a, a out. He looked at a deeper throw. Wanted to go there and finds that third option underneath. And by the way, the look at the deeper throw got the defense to, to loosen back and, and allow that underneath throw to happen. Ducks only rush three. There's the underneath. And Oregon keeps Craycraft just running toward the sideline, never letting him turn. It sounds a little trite, I'm sure, Glenn, but really this is so much of playing an offense like Washington State, if you're the Oregon defense, is can you tackle, right? Keep them in front of you. They're going to complete those passes. That's right. Yeah. Keep them in front and tackle. And this is a long, long third down here. And again, boy, the Ducks would get a lift here if they could get two straight three and outs. Fox standing in. He's got... And Wicks is going to get close. Let's see if Prevo was able to keep him short. I think so. The mark looks like it's going to be short. Not by much. I like how Wicks turned north and south, get his shoulder square. Just didn't have enough. Good job by the Ducks team attacking. And Mike Leach is going to line up to go for it here. It looks like they need no more than the length of the football. Well, the center really moving that ball forward to snap it. And Falk trying to keep it. There's the push, and the push works. So the rugby play that I still don't understand how that's allowed, but it is, and it works. You just push other people. And rugby's a great game. As as I just, as, just don't as, get that. As linemen, we like to say that one of the greatest joys is to move a person from point A to point B against his will. <laughs> right, there's a heavy backfield look, and the Cougs try a handoff, but it's busted up by Rodney Hardrick, and he drops Morrow for a loss. Nice job of eye discipline by Hardrick. You know, you talk about a linebacker's job, understanding to slide 
along that level, keep the blocker. You know, that means the, the, off, the defensive lineman kept the offensive lineman off of him. Strong tackle by Hardrick. Ball coming to the sideline. Dom Williams with the catch. And that will uh, give the Cougars a short third down. Probably won't get the ball off here before the quarter ends. And that'll give Washington State a couple of minutes here to come up with a third and two play. 10-7 Ducks after one. The reality of a new season and already having a conference loss the Ducks trying to stay right at home and on third down coming out of the quarter break Fox receiver can't get free over the middle the Cougars don't like that that's what you're seeing Craycraft couldn't get to where Falk thought he was going to be and Rodney Hardrick was standing yeah. in his way owning his ground and it was within two yards of that line of scrimmage and so the Cougs lined up here, fourth and two. Wicks the running back. And Dom Williams can't hang on. Ran a little legal pick play there that would have had a first down, but Williams couldn't hold the ball. Yeah, you called it a little bit of a legal pick play, because it is. And that's just a mistake by a young kid, just taking his eyes off the ball for a sec. And that one hurts the Cougars going for going yeah. losing it on downs when you're trying to match scores with Oregon. Haven't seen any sign of Adams in this first half. It is Lockie back and doing this is Freeman. Freeman is brought, brought down by the last hope. Shalom Luani saved a touchdown. This again outside make a guy miss get north and south. You see strength, vision. This, this, you know, superlatives you keep saying over and over, but that's why he's consistent. That's why the offense is consistent because of that guy understanding his role and his position. Now Griffin gets the carry. He takes a big smack. That was Luani flying up to make the tackle. This goes back, Glenn. It's our first time seeing the Ducks this year for, for us. And last year we talked about this a couple times and brought it up. The, with all the great offenses here in recent years, especially the Chip Kelly years, that's the one thing they didn't have. You had to go back really to Jonathan Stewart, a running back with the force and the strength of Freeman. Jonathan Stewart, LeGarrette yeah. Blunt. Blunt was here, yeah, for the brief time it's, as Lockheed's dragged down. Those were guys, that's why you, yeah. you can run the inside zone with them. That's the guys who are strong enough to get four hard yards. Because you're going to come against teams that play really good defense, and four hard is all you're going to get to start the game. If you run from four hard yards trying to get more by using speed, it's going to be a long day for you. You're going to end up losing some games. And I think you're right. Bringing him back was a big difference. Get, bringing Freeman in. Nice cut good. by Lockie. Oh, that was smart. After Destiny Vial made the tackle on the previous play, Lockie makes the perfect read on this cut. And how about the cut? That's what I like. He gets out here, and then Kent stakes a leg, and I'm out of here. You don't see that out of uh, Tyler Lockie too no, often. That's, that's a nice job by him. Very nice run by Jeff Lockie, and it's first down now inside the 15. Excuse me, Jeff. And the Ducks, who will get the ball first in the second half. This would be a very important thing for them if they could end the first, at least on their last possession, with a score. Freeman flexing out very far to the left. And the ball not held on the inside by Nelson. So two-way Charles Nelson. That was a first, great first throw to him today. Very nice throw by Lockheed. That's a tough throw to make. It was accurate. Nelson just has to come up with it. So just over two minutes in the half. Overcast. Afternoon now in Eugene. It has stayed dry so far. The wind has played a factor at parts of this half. Freeman. Royce Freeman. 
first and goal. He just, when he runs like that, you don't know how anybody stops him. And, and a really well-designed play, too, bringing your tight end Johnny Mutt back across the formation. And how smart was that? The Ducks line up so quickly, and Freeman takes it in for the touchdown. And the Royce Freeman, that, that's so worthy because he did so much of the work on that drive. And then, Glenn, there's Oregon dialing up another specialty. They're running that play so quickly at the goal line, the Cougars couldn't get set. That's right. Get, get to the line, run it quick. You're going to be lower than they are. You can get one or two yards. That was a nice job by the Ducks. Tempo, a mix of plays. That was a good drive by Oregon. Schneider kicks through the extra point, 17 to 7. Well, the Ducks possess a weapon in Royce Freeman. This sophomore is something else. So much of the yardage gained on this drive was him. So much on this one play, elusive, strong. He gets the touchdown. Ducks up. State Farm halftime report. Anthony Heron, who was a great defensive lineman in his day at Iowa in the Arena League, and Anthony's quarterback, and now our crew and. Of course, the Red River was a big surprise for Texas today, but Glenn Parker will be locked in on number two. Well, Arizona did not look very good last Saturday. They must have looked real good today. Well, they got their quarterback yeah. back and yep. a little defense, I think. And that's all coming up in our State Farm halftime report. 127 in the first half. All right, Cougs have enough time here. And their offense, short throw to Craycraft. That was good pressure that time by both Buckner and Christian French to get into the face of Falk, and that's why that ball is delivered low. So first half, that's the 33rd throw of the first half, and it's a completed pass down by contact. 33rd throw already by Falk. He's completed 24. He said Washington State... In their offense, as you said, Glenn, there are certain things they would regard like a run. Statistically, they, they're not running it at all. And Fox wrapped up. That's the one thing you don't want in the late rush situation. Jalen Jelks. So now that forces uh, Washington State timeout. Jalen Jelks with the sack. Nice screen set up to Harrington. He's got a lot of space. Whoa, that's trouble for Oregon. And saving the day there was Tyree Robinson. If he doesn't angle Harrington, that might have gone. And you know, un good job of setting up his block. And then you see the big fella, you know, two guard, uh, guard in the center out there. Riley Sorensen, Eduardo Middleton leading the way all the way down the field. Throw to Lewis. It's his first catch. And that's going to be just short of a first down. So the clock will run until Washington State takes the timeout. So the Ducks have done a good job defensively of taking away the middle of the field. And that's, that's what happened on that last sack. So the, the adjustment is screens get out into space. And so that's the adjustment Washington State's made to try to get the back the middle of the field. Yeah, those screens or flares to the running backs out in the flat. That seems to have worked well for the Cougs in the first half. They've done a nice job of it because Oregon is so conscientious of making sure they bracket the middle of the field yeah. to take away those crossing routes. But again, Washington State attempted between the two quarterbacks last year well over 700 passes. So with the timeout, and got to get to the sideline, does. Nice, wise play there by Morrow. Not much of a gain. In fact, no gain on the play, but he got out of bounds. And actually a minus one, so but the Cooks still have two more plays here to get a first down. Don't know if they trust a, a kicker 50-plus. Oh, that's a nice throw, and it's dropped and incomplete. Oh, Dom Williams. That stings. At worst, that's first and goal. 
Yeah, this, this ball is really well thrown. But take a look at the safety coming through, Tyree Robinson. I think that puts a little thought in your head. Yep. Yep. And that's two big that's, drops for Don Williams. Right. And that's a terrific throw, you said, Glenn. Well said by Fox. So now four down. Cougars go. And that's held by Marks, and it is first and goal. That ball was thrown before Marks makes a cut, before he's even looking for it. You'll see his head turn, and the ball is there. Another good throw by Paul. They should have a shot here to run if they want to do four plays to the end zone. No question enough time for three. That one is going to be through the hands of Lewis, trying to make a tough catch with Arian Springs closing in. This ball is thrown the opposite shoulder, and that's why it's so hard for yeah. him to turn all the way back around for that ball. Craycraft motions to the top there. Craycraft is in the middle of the three receiver bunch. Top of your picture, Mark Solo to the bottom. To Marks. Does he get a foot down? Yes, touchdown Cougars. And another terrific reception by Gabe Marks. Gabe Marks does such a nice job with his left hand to just give a little push and separate right there. Just that little get the hand off you so that he can get out and get that ball. Perfectly thrown for him. There's no grab on his arm or anything. That was a, a, a that's a good wide receiver knowing the situation and knowing how to get out of a problem to get yourself open. I'll give you, that's, that's some drive engineered by Washington State. And Falk does make a terrific fourth down throw to Marks and then the touchdown throw to Marks. Two of them in the half. So this will have a little different feel going into halftime. As Eric Powell puts through the point. But Luke Falk engineering what the Cougars hope is a huge drive to score a touchdown just before halftime. And there are your numbers. Those of you that like to know, in the first half, Freeman, the big offensive player for the Ducks. Falk engineering two length of field touchdown drives for the Cougars. Jill? Coach Alfred, they scored on the first drive and last drive of the half. What do you have to say about your defense so far? Well, obviously not the way you want to start or finish, but, uh, you know, did some good things in between defensively, have to take advantage of some turnovers offensively and not turn it over offensively, and then, you know, at the end, yeah, just need to finish better. One-two punch for you in your run game with Freeman and Griffin. What have you seen, seen from the two of them? Uh, again, doing some good things, doing some things that, that, that we'll clean up at, at half time here uh, but those guys have a lot of you know a lot of talent and we'll figure out some ways to give them the ball thanks so much yep thank you Ted and between uh, I think Mark Helfrich was right his defense was fine the bookends weren't so, so strong good adjustments by the Washington Cougars offensive staff managed to take advantage of some of the things the Ducks were doing defensively all right Ducks by three at the halftime now for the State Farm halftime report with Anthony Heron Now Washington State scoring late to pull within three of the Ducks at halftime despite a dominant rush first half from Royce Freeman. Gabe Marks caught two touchdown passes, one early and one at the end of the half. And it was all spearheaded by Luke Falk. Throwing it 40 times, throwing it effectively. And Glenn, where did he throw it? You know, it, he likes middle of the field, we know that. But if you take a look behind the line, of stri the line a lot of yards there, and then it that, that 10 to 20 yard spot, a lot of yards there. Get the defense coming up against those little behind the line throws, throw over the top of them. That's where most of his yards will come from. Started to uh, rain here during half. Looks like it's just lightly misting right now. Kind of uh, is that sideways mist blowing through. Yeah, you can see a little bit on our lens there. Some dark clouds, so that may be the story. That could well be a Part of this second half will be contesting the conditions. The wind is whipping again. It's whipping, if we can judge by the one American flag we see here at Autzen Stadium, it's going to be 
win that Oregon will be going into here in this third quarter. What's interesting, though, is if you look at the, the tops of the uh, goalposts, yeah. at one end they're blowing right. out, and at the other end they're blowing out. So somehow the wind is swirling <laughs> in such a way that it's splitting yeah. the difference here. All right, Charles Nelson back. Let's that one hit, and the Ducks will start on the touchback. And it will be Lockie to come out and start the third for the Ducks. How much do they lean on the guy right there? 21. Uh, as I said to start this game, I think heavy dose of Royce Freeman. Well, it's going to be Addison in space to start. So good little six-yard first down play. That's the fifth reception for Addison of the seven completions for Lockie. Well, the same way that, that Washington State throws out to get the middle throws open, Oregon throws out to get the inside zone working. Oh, they're there. Lockie pulled the ball back. Or, excuse me, he did not pull the ball back. He left it with Freeman, and you saw how many red shirts were there, starting with Destiny Vio. Well, Destiny Vio read it. They, they know what's coming. They know Freeman's getting this ball. They're going to have to establish that option where the quarterback keeps it and goes in order to soften up that defense. Vio and Barber combining their two-yard loss. So Oregon needs five, and Lockie throws one that bouncing into the turf in front of Evan Bayless. And so that's not what Oregon wanted. Probably thought they had a shot at being 10 up with the ball to start the third quarter. Instead, they're three up, and they go three and out. And so credit a big win for that Cougars defense. They hold field position. They're going to get good field position coming out. And if they can score, they flip this game on its ear. Gabe Marks to return. Wheeler hits a low line drive. Marks with a chance here. Got a good block to get outside. And then Oregon covered it well. Very nice first block there by Tavares Martin. But a good drive start for the Cougars coming up. So now with weather becoming a factor, it's first down Cougars. Falk will run. And then he'll slide getting about four well who better to tell us how is it doing down there jill oh thank you so much ted it's <laughs> it's going great down yeah. here the skies really have opened up about five minutes left of halftime it started raining again and it has really opened up down here washington state is doing the best to keep the balls dry here on the sideline but it's going to be a tough go i think in the second half well, that's the obvious question. When you're throwing it on every down, what does this weather do as a short gain there to Lewis that will leave the Cougars a yard short? Believe it or not, it, the slipperiness is not the factor. It's the weight of the ball the that foot becomes the, the okay. factor. It gets wet. It gets heavy. It's harder to throw. It's harder to put zip onto it and the things you want. So right away, a little test for the Cougs, third and one. And they will run for it and run for it. With a lot goes Wicks. Wicks driving it all the way down inside the Oregon 30. We mentioned it. Wicks, north and south, not being fancy. You don't get the ball that often in this offense. You've got to get what you can as a running back. Again, Washington State has only run a couple of plays today just simply for shock value. Tavares Martin, this may go. He is. Tavares Martin with a Cougar touchdown. And Washington State has silenced Austin. They score at the end of the second and the start of the third to take the lead. Tunnel screen. Number 73, Eduardo Middleton is going to get out. He's going to be the block that springs him right there. Now this move. Oh, that's a tough cut. Well designed, perfectly blocked, and yet the, the ball carrier became his own best blocker. The key to that touchdown. Southwest Florida, another player Mike Leach brought a long way to Pullman, Tavares Martin. He's from Belle Glade, Florida. That is the southwest corner of the state. Pretty good football area. But you don't see many players from there that play in the pack. And this is the first touchdown of his college career. Well. They don't run the ball a lot. This is a run in their offense. Tavares Martin gets the tunnel screen, couple big blocks, and the Cougars have taken over this game. This one has a little different feel to it now. Actually, no. 
wrong. This has a very different feel to it. After the last 10 minutes or so of play, and Nelson gets hipped down to the turf, shy of the 20-yard line. Freeman leaves to the bottom. And Addison, good first down play, gets an Oregon first. Oregon offensive coordinator, Scott Frost. He knows he's got to get Lockie comfortable. He's got to get him e easy throws that are makeable that can get moving down the field. Nice job. Griffin. Still. Speed inside the 15. Griffin not only runs fast, he runs tough. Yeah, running over a block, running through uh, running through tacklers. That was a great job by Taj Griffin. Picked up an incredible block by his center, Matt Haggerty. Matt Haggerty is the, the transfer from Notre Dame, and he pulled out, got a beautiful block. Griffin set it up well. And now the Ducks try to capitalize. They go fast. Oh! And that was the dangerous ball off the tips of the fingers of Bayless. And the Ducks most fortunate that ball fell away from a Cougar. Yeah, Jeff Lockie just has to put this into his body, into the front of him. It gets it a high and a little behind. You can see Oregon trying to capitalize again on the big play they've been waiting for from Griffin. Now hoping perhaps can Freeman hammer it home. He had a feeling a lot of Duck fans in the stadium the last half hour have been sitting there thinking, would they get Griffin the ball? See if he could just do what he just did. Now it's Addison. And he did, oh, he never really got right as he had to maneuver to catch the ball again. Parker Henry to tackle them. But that's why what you referenced earlier, it's so important where a quarterback throws the pass. And, and it's doubly important in read zone uh, uh, and run pass option type offenses or the spread offenses because the, it's all predicated on catching the ball on the move. So a long third. Addison motions. Flag for, I think, a bat. Let's see if it's Freeman. Freeman's going to get the end zone. Let's see the flag. I, I thought maybe Addison went toward the line before the snap. Let's see. There is no foul for offensive pass interference. The pass is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Offside. Defense number 51. Well, there it is on third and 14. Freeman with a pass goes in. It's a. I'd it, say missed call. It is a missed call. He, it was over the line of scrimmage. Pass was not caught behind the line of scrimmage. We've had a couple of those this year. We've seen that problem determining the line of scrimmage. I believe it was a Tempe. We had one of those. Would have been a safety. Fortunately for Washington State, hurts them because that was a missed call. Now the line you'll see across the screen, black line is the line of scrimmage. You can see where the ball snapped. It snapped just inside the 17-yard line. And look where Freeman catches the ball. I mean, that's honestly not even close. It's a yard over. Yeah. Here the weather has calmed. The wind is really... Died. It was almost as if about a 20 to 30 minute front blew through. Here comes Tavares Martin. He's in space. Oh, and then he got tackled. That was a nice low tackle to prevent a longer run back. Four rush. Deep throw for Marks. Tough catch. And he makes it. Gay Marks. Spectacular. Absolutely perfect throw by Luke Falk. Marks gave himself real estate by up the numbers so that there was a place to put this ball. Luke Falk delivered it a bullseye where it had to be. Marks adjusted his body so beautifully to that ball and hauls it in for 38 yards and a first down. He's having a, a battle. I Hanacho, freshman's having a, an afternoon challenge. There's a different man racing up there to make a stop Oliver or excuse me Johnny Reagan that's Johnny Reagan 
with the tackle for loss. And that's the thing with this defense against this offense. You have to trust what you see, react, and, and act very fast on what you see. And the big pass plays that have hurt Oregon's defense in the early going. Can Washington State cash in on one here? Harrington. Oh, and there's a good play flying out was Henry Mondo on that screen. Again, what determines this play? Tyson Coleman, outside linebacker, forces the edge. He'll come out of your right. He's going to beat the block of that guard. Gets upfield. That forces him back under into that help by Mondo. Linebackers helping the big guys make the plays, vice versa. So now the situation reversed what it was for Oregon. This is an awkward field spot, so you feel like this is probably two downs for the Cougars here. The first one, Falk steps up, delivers, broken up. Trying to hit Craycraft over the middle. Jawan Williams. Very impressed with this secondary doing a job of taking away what Luke Falk wants the most. Those over the middle throws, the deep ends, the mesh crosses. That quieted Craycraft a little bit. Now you see Falk slightly favoring a leg as he goes off. And the Cougars are going to line up and try. Now they have the wind what, such as it is right now. They do have the wind with them. And Powell's going to try this from 53 plus. He has the leg to do it. That will nowhere close. In fact, that was likely hit when that ball came off. Somebody got that piece of that at the line of scrimmage. The challenge when you're kicking the long field goal, can you get it high enough past the line of scrimmage? Powell here does not. Yeah, I think someone got just yep. a tip on it, just a little bit. Just, just got the nub of the ball as it was going up and over. Griffin. Broke one, but actually that tackle eventually disrupts the play. Never regained his full balance. As oh. Parker Henry on the play, that will likely be the last of the third quarter. But we saw Oregon do the last drive that got them down the field, pulling their center, the pin and pull play that, of course, Max Unger ran here when he was here last year with a run of Krasu. Now they're running with Hegarty, and you're seeing it start to open up. So the Ducks are going to run one more play here. Lockie will keep, and he'll get a half a yard and pay a pretty good price for it. So there'll be a third and ten facing Lockie and the Ducks, who have the lead, but just three going to the fourth. Well, these teams played a very tight game in Pullman last year. The Ducks prevail. There's a lot of stake led Parker for the Pac-12 North coming up in this fourth quarter. Oh, there, there really is. And the thing is, who's going to take control? We saw it seesaw in that third quarter. It's gonna, really going to be who can handle the pressure and who can get after it and maybe change their offense a little to get some more points on the board. When you think about how much fun this could set up for the rest of this football season in the North, since this conference went to 12 and they split divisions, the North has basically just been Oregon Stanford each year. Could Washington State insert themselves into the mix as Cal is trying to do, as Washington hoped they did Thursday night? Third down here for Lockie. He's played the whole second half. Can he run for another one? Lockie makes a move, and he's going to be just short. Just short. Jeff Lockie, I'll tell you what, it is not smooth looking when he runs, but it is tough, and he's put himself in there. They're going to go on fourth down and a half yard. Freeman gets it. He almost got all of it. The Ducks just 40% all year on third down and short, but a big bounce here by Freeman. He does a nice job bouncing outside the block of Terrell Crosby. And, and I'll tell you, when, when I've got that hammer, everybody on defense looks like a nail to me. Good coaches know their strengths. They know what they need to use. And Mark Helfrich, Scott Frost, they know what they possess. 
Now it's Griffin using his speed to run against the grain there and take it inside the 15. And what a, what a arsenal this will be as it matures. The speed to the edge of Griffin and the hammer of Freeman on the inside-outside zones. Freeman has 2 11 on the ground right now. And Griffin ran into Equali and could not get the line to gain. So it'll be a short third. Ducks, the Ducks have done most of their damage today, almost all of it on offense on the ground. Polar opposite. The Cougars have done almost all of theirs in the air. One more run. Can Griffin get outside? Yes. To the end zone. Close, but out short. I thought he reached for that ball over that pylon. I thought he got it. We're going we're gonna to get a look at it. He reads this out and then uses his, has the speed to get outside. Now let's see. See if he reaches out and gets that ball. I think that's a touchdown. And he is an Oregon has a two score lead. Ducks have done a really nice job today running over Cameron Hunt, Terrell Crosby. A lot of yardage has been made in that, those two gaps. So Freeman has his third touchdown today. Two on the ground, one as a receiver. And Aiden Schneider gives Oregon a 10-point lead. Well, you know, Ted, we harp on, you have the hammer, you use it. You see Crosby, number 73, with that down block, opens up that backside. Royce Freeman takes advantage of it. He's just too strong in that situation for arm tackles. His 212th rushing yard today, Jill. I was able to talk to Royce Freeman yesterday. We asked him what's going to be going on in life after football for you. He had no hesitation. He said he wanted to be a marriage counselor. Now, he's known as one of the most mature guys on the team, but the follow-up question, do you have a girlfriend? No hesitation. He said, no, absolutely not. But we asked, all right, so how does this come about? How do you want to be a marriage counselor? He said, listen, I like hearing everybody else's problems, and I like telling them what to do. So I think it would be a really good fit for me because people take my advice. Uh, I can see 20, let's see, what we're we going to 2015 now, 2033 or 2035. Dr. Royce, I can just see the TV show now. What do you think? <laughs> I can see after he's been married maybe, yeah. I don't know, five to ten years, he realizes everything he thought was right is wrong. All right, Washington State, boy, that's a nice mix-up first down call. That's well done. Everybody in the stadium expecting a first down throw, and instead, instead it's a... Good game by Gerard Wicks. Timely runs in this offense can be devastating. I tell you, they, I'm, if you throw enough passes, I guess you'll have some drops, but they're more than I would have thought today by the Cougar receivers. I would agree with you, whether it's the rain, whether it's just the situation, who knows, but you're right. It seems there have been more than the normal amount of drops. That's hell. And here's Washington State right back into Oregon territory on the catch by Robert Lewis. Well, he's the slot receiver here, number 15. It's just an out with a clearing go by the outside receiver. That opens that up. Luke Falt, nice delivery. Oregon's got to figure out a way to get some pressure on him and make him move. They've done a good job all day of it. Falk on the slant. Priester with the catch. Short gain. 
So Washington doing a lot of three by one sets and now coming back out to two by two. Yeah, that's interesting because two by two is their stand with their standard, isn't it? For the most part, yes. That's where they are here. Two receivers each side running play. And Jamal Morrow is not tackled. Still not. And finally is ridden out of bounds. He never went down. Charles Nelson saved a touchdown. One of the, the things about this Oregon team, young, the secondary, not great tacklers. And you can see a lot of hitting but not tackling. And there's a big difference between the two. And Morrill makes them pay with a lot of yardage. So first and goal. Wicks and Morrow are the two running backs. And Wicks is piled up. And there you see the strength of DeForest Buckner owning that line of scrimmage, that back. That gap, he just owns it. So now going, as you said, Glenn, here they go to the three wide receivers to the right. It'll be the top of your picture. They like the fade out of this to the far receiver. Marks. He's the man at the very top. And that's where they're going. More of a back, almost a back shoulder throw, not really the fade. And it, Well, they ran across. They ran across. They brought Marks over. You'll see it. And, and that's Lewis out. Lewis, yeah. So, obviously, they thought the Ducks kind of knew they liked to go to Marks on the fade there as well. All right, third and goal at the five. Jamal Morrow to the left of Luke Fall. Going to the back of the end zone to Dom Williams. And now what does Mike Leach do? do? I, you've, got, you've got to have the three anyways. So I take the three. I kick and let my defense play. It does no good if I don't get my three. And that's the decision. So Eric Powell will hope on just a slightly longer extra point here. 23 yards to get the Cougars within a score. And he does. So 353, both teams three timeouts. So a lot of football still to play. Today, next Saturday, it'll be homecoming in Pullman. One o'clock game against Oregon State. And the lo and behold, we will be there. The Palouse. I love the Palouse. I was uh, talking to a, a friend of mine on that staff that I've known a long time, and he had said, you know, when I used to come up here for games, I'd say, man, who would, who could live here? And now that he's up there, he says, I don't know that we want to live anywhere else. It's the, gra it's a, it's the greatest hometown, he said, to be in. And he's coached in the Pac-12. He's coached in the Big 12. What's he, he thinks, what's he think of the facilities? He loves everything they've got. They're as good as anybody's. As you know, they've really updated them. The Eugene uh, paper this morning had a great line. They they called uh, Leach's comments this week trolling. <laughs> All right. Oregon's got nine men up. Actually, ten men up. So it's going to be a short kick. Fielded by Addison. Again, given the alignment for Oregon, no blocking. So how do the Ducks try to play this here, knowing they need a couple of first downs? Put this game away. They start with Freeman. And he'll get four on first down. In the this, ball. Is, this is all this game has been shipped now, Glenn. You watch and see when Mike Leach will use timeouts. That's right. How fast does Oregon play? Well, I think that they're going to they'll slow the pace somewhat and Tyler Johnstone tried that first down play and it didn't work he left again so the senior member of the O-line really got had something go wrong on the last series hope he's already he's had some injuries throughout his career we hope he's fine second and six for Jeff Lockie as quarterback Freeman again and Freeman driving so He's gained seven on two plays, and now a third down that 
Of course, if you're Oregon, if you get a first down here, you will force Washington State to have to use its timeouts. They need two and a half. And, and they've got, you know, they've got Jake Pasarczyk in at right so, guard for Cameron Hunt, who was so effective mm -hmm. in the first half. So you wonder if something's wrong with him. And so that, that combo of the right side that was blocking so well and having the backside protected, because that's how this works, maybe that's coming into question now. They need a yard and a half, and it's Freeman, and he may not get it. Look at the leg drive. And Freeman with an incredible effort to get close. Taylor Taliulu is in there leading the Cougar push, and I think he will be marked short. We get a look. He pulled the guard, Pisarczyk. Defense does a good job yeah. of understanding their run fits and what gap they're supposed to be in. Wow, that was and that's a great call. That was Taylor Taliulu coming up from the safety spot. He put the hit that stopped Freeman's forward move, and then teammates helped for the finish. So Pisarczyk comes around. And when he blocks, that's they. He wants to, the, the back wants to go to his outside shoulder, but as you said, Taylor Taliulu, right there where he was supposed to to make the play. No question, you punt this away and set your defense to the task of quick to read, quick to react defense. So Ian Wheeler to punt. Gabe Marks, receiver with two touchdown catches today. Return man for the Cougars. Washington State not threatening. They don't want to hit the punter. They'll let Marks catch this ball. And he doesn't get very far. He tried to get outside, but he got smacked. And that was Johnny Munt. A tight end on the cover that got him. Well, Nelson, Charles Nelson is the first guy that gets him outside. And then it's Johnny Munt playing off the block and just that's, that's good tackling. That's well, wrap up, extend the hips, and run. Well, here you go. 70 yards. Can the Ducks deliver a defensive stop? Can Falk do what he did at Rutgers, as Glenn showed you in the open today? Take him down. Pressure got grabbed up top, and it's almost intercepted on the desperation throw. Kept watching Lane Clark to see if he was going to throw a flag. As did somebody grab a mask? Yeah, there is a flag coming. Lane Clark finally just he just now threw it. Yep, that was a face mask. Or is Christian. he going to call grounding? Hold on, let's see. Yes. So it's a grounding flag, not, I, I was thinking, Glenn, like you were from up here, it looked like they were touching him up high. Well, they're allowed to touch him up high, but you can't grab the face mask, and he does. Christian French gets his face mask right there, Ooh. and it doesn't get seen, and then it's almost intercepted, but the reason there could have been a sack there was a great job by Joe Walker dropping right to where Falk wanted to deliver the ball. Well, now the Cougars have three plays to get 21 yards, and Falk had a man, but he just overthrew him up the seam. Robert Lewis. That stopped some hearts for a second here. Yeah, you see a guy running. He's open. Ball just delivered. You know, that's that that's that touch where it, 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 you don't want to loft it because that safety is going to kill you if you do. And it, you got to either, it's got to be a rope or it's got to be probably not throw. Because that, that's not a touch pass. That safety was sitting on it. Fox got a man, Dom Williams, and that's a first down. Third and 21, and Washington State converts. Common concept for them, deep in, Dom Williams, Luke Welk does a great job delivering that ball. Three-man rush, sideline throw to Williams again, broken up. Williams and then Charles Nelson. What a day he's had playing almost the whole day in the secondary. And here's the, the previous play. You see the go with the deep end, and he just gets himself to the window. Falk sees that second window open and throws it to him. It was a nice job. Now on that last play, how smart was Charles Nelson not trying to kill the receiver where you can pick up a real penalty? But the big pass plays, those have been 
a thorn to the Oregon defense this year, and Washington State pulls one out on third and 21 to keep their last hope alive. Screen. And, well, that's a good job on Oregon's part. Alex Balducci flashing from the line, running out there in the flat to not let that play go. For the guy at home, that's a 310-pound man keeping up with a running back. That's a big body moving out there. That was a great job by him. Mike Leach holding on to his timeouts. Third down. Falk. The cross. First down. Washington State getting the ball to Marks. And the yards after catch take it to the Oregon 37. 22 yards. That's why it's so hard to cover horizontally when there's speed. It gets the separation, gets you running. Tyree Robinson, nice job of making that tackle to keep the ball in bounds, though. And Oregon racing to substitute on defense. And Morrow spins underneath that attempted tackle, falls forward to gain a couple of yards. Tyson Coleman on the hit. And it's fascinating, Glenn, to me to watch Oregon do have done to them what they do to so many people. They barely got their 11 people on the field on defense there. Yeah, they didn't expect it. And Falk does a terrific job. He got that away as an incomplete pass. He had a receiver, Jamal Morrow. No. Land Clark is calling that a sack. He's calling that play dead. Forward progress stopped. So that clock Ooh. is running. The clock running, the down and distance altered. And that's going to be short of the first down. And Mike Leach is going to have to use his last timeout. He has to here. It's fourth down. Wow. What a call. Falk thought he had saved the day by throwing to an eligible receiver. But the referee decided forward progress stop. Protect the quarterback. And probably a pretty good call because he was in the process of falling to the ground in a tackle. So... Uh, hard to fault that call. They're, they're, they're erring on the side of safety. Such an altering call because it changed. The clock started to move. It changed the down and distance. And now Mike Leach had to use a timeout here on fourth down. And this becomes a scramble. You need a first down unless you're willing to roll it all in one play to the end zone. Four rush. Fuck to Craycraft. Now the scramble with eight seconds. They stop the clock to move the chains. Washington State does a great job to get there. So now it is second and goal. And the administration of this is uneven. And it's there's a microphone problem with Lane Clark today. And that's really coming into play here. He's not able to communicate. But here we go. It is second and goal. Seven seconds. Enough time, two plays, Glenn, at least. You're under a lot of stress to make that first one quick. There's the fade. Williams. Got it! Touchdown, Cougars! And now, what does Mike Leach do? Does, go, he, does he go to overtime? You, you go one. You go overtime. Give yourself a chance. It's the fade. Dom Williams, six foot two. He's up high. He out jumps the defender. Defender didn't turn on it. It's a nice, beautifully placed pass. And a caught ball by Dom Williams. The finish from Falk to Williams. The key play, the fourth down pass from Falk to Craycraft. The extra point is good. And unless there's a band on the field, we're going to have overtime. And the significance of all this etched on the face of Mark Helfrich, already with a home loss in conference play knowing still the schedule they have to face and up 10 on their home field in the fourth quarter to see Washington State come back and Dominic Williams going against a freshman two freshmen on those corners Ayanacho and Amadi that was Ugo Amadi well here's the play that's kept the Cougars alive well an overtime that has so much riding on it for the Oregon Ducks 
already with one conference loss on this field. And Royce Freeman just doesn't go down. Not until he's inside the 10. Just won't go down. Oregon has won 84% of their games in this stadium over the last 18 seasons. That's why one home loss is uncomfortable. Two would be unthinkable. score Lockie to Addison Jeff Lockie's second touchdown pass today and he's really his connection has been with Braylon Addison 13 passes completed, eight to Addison. And, and what a nice job delivering that ball. Jeff Lockie stood, saw him come open, threw it, knew he had him there. That was, that was, and it's well designed. Addison slipping into that area where you kind of create traffic, so he comes clean. Good, good concept. Great delivery by Jeff Lockie. They were down 17-7, Washington State in the second quarter. Came back, took a lead, then they were down 31-21. Scored the last 10 points of the fourth. And now Falk goes right back to work. And this is end zone or bust. Jamal Morrow, the running back. And they'll run him on first down. And he will run, and he will still run. And he doesn't go down. And Morrow takes it down to the 11-yard line. Morrow answering Freeman. Runs through two arm tackles and three defenders before to get that yardage. So now the Cougars do not have to get this to the end zone. You see, they have a first down at the one. Marks alone to the bottom against Springs, but it's another running play. And this time, Jamal Morrow doesn't get, get far past the line. Gets about four. There's Balducci there. That was a big-time tackle by Balducci. Fighting off a defender with one arm, just dragging him down. Morrow comes out, wicks in as the Cougar running back. Harrington has not come back since his second fumble. Gabe Marks again to the bottom against Springs. And they, now they bring a man out and double Dom Williams at the top. Middle ball to Craycraft, but he's short of the first down. So it'll be third down and about two. Well, the Ducks obviously saw the same film I did. I watched it all. When they go three by one, they love that fade to the one. And that was Dom Williams, and they broke, brought double coverage out there against it. All right, so the Cougars have two plays here. They need to get at least to the one-yard line. Ultimately, they have to get to the end zone. Craycraft slot to the bottom. Marks is at the furthest bottom. But a running play to Wicks won't get there. And now there'll be one play left for Washington State. And it will need at least two yards. It is hard to run the ball in limited space when you don't run the ball as a team. So what does Mike Leach dial up here? They need about a yard and a half to stay alive. They can get a first down at the one. Craig Kraft, Lewis, and Marks are the receivers all to the bottom. Morrow the running back. A running play. And let's see where the mark is. This is all about the mark. The fans don't understand this, but I think he got a first down. I agree with Oregon you. Oregon doesn't get it. Nobody's aware. Oregon thinks they held him out of the end zone. I think he got a first down. I agree. And the Oregon players are not situation aware. They're all celebrating, and I think Morrow's kept this game alive. I think so. That was a hard nose. A great tackle, but he puts his shoulder pads down. We can see the yellow line here. A great tackle, but a great job, Morrow, extending that ball just a little. 
with his right hand. See that right shoulder come out? That gets him the first. So now four more chances for Washington State. Here comes Marks, a little jet motion. Falk trying to run it. Where is his progress marked? He's in. Touchdown. Falk got in. And of course, this uh, boy, Falk got in. Did he pay some price? Let's see. It looks Ouch. like he did. Wow. As he took a belt right at the goal line. And all he has to do is break the plane. Now, again, there's no camera right on the goal line. It's Charles Nelson Ooh. again with a big hit and tackle. And at this. All right, so now the most important part right here. And there's no givens for Washington State in this game. Good snap, good kick. Second overtime coming. And there's some happy Cougar fans. Been a while. All right, so Falk right back to work. 72nd pass. And here comes the late flag. That was his 49th completed pass. Eighth to Gabe Marks. Tyree Robinson just rides him out of bounds, then slings him to the ground. That's the unnecessary part of the roughness. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number three. After this is to the goal, with an automatic first down. You'll see this, it's clearly out of bounds when Tyree gets here. Uses his body to sling him down. He didn't have to. He knew he was out. That's just maturity. He's young. It's a young second year. That's something you just, you've got to be smart enough. All right, so now everybody in the stadium should be aware. The Oregon player should be aware. The ball is just inside the 10-yard line. So this is first and goal. Single back is Wicks. Falk under center. And Dom Williams caught that out of bounds. Aaron Springs. Hi, I'm picking myself up off the ground. He took a snap from center? He did. He did. How about that? It made nice timing for him, but what a great job Aaron Springs does of riding Dom Williams, gaining all the real estate and riding him out of bounds. That's, that's a corner making a play with his body that doesn't really show up. He just he ate the real estate up. There was no place to put the ball. Luke Falk just proved to everybody watching him he can take a snap from center. In this era of football, that's not, that's not as outrageous as it sounds. Second and goal. Wicks runs it down to the five. So two plays to get five yards now for the Cougars. And for all their success, it still feels as if the Cougars have to fight for every play. Whereas the Ducks, it almost still seems inevitable that they score because of that run game. Again, Craycraft and Marks both to the bottom. That's their preferred side. Falk looking for the quick hit to the middle. Craig Kraft, ball pops free. Lewis has it. What's the ruling? Let's see what the ruling is. I've not seen any signal yet either, from the officials. Either he's down or if this ball popped up, it's a touchdown because it's not a fumble because the ball never hit the ground. And what In real time, I, I was having a hard time. I didn't think the ball hit the ground. Craig Kraft may have crossed... Craycraft may have crossed the plane himself. The ball popped free, and Lewis. Let's all right. Let's. This will help us all. So the right. ball. He's down. He's down, and it should be on about the. It looks like the half yard line. The ball never crosses that plane. Yeah. It's a, 
But he's down. He's down by contact. Yeah, he's on the ground. He's, yes. he's on the, the ground. The question is, was he? did he break the plane? After review, the ruling on the field of touchdown stands. So not confirmed. They obviously thought they could not see the point at which the fumble yes. occurred. So therefore, it stands. It's the ruling on the field. The other question on that is it was it actually ruled a completed pass to Craycraft? Could it have just been a ball that's batted and control not controlled and ends up as a completed pass to Robert Lewis as rather than a fumble recovery? That may well have been the determination. But we're splitting hairs there. It's a touchdown and the Cougars have a seven point lead. At the end of the day, that's what it's called. Yep. So we'll now we'll see if yep. the Ducks can respond. Haven't played Stanford yet, haven't played Cal yet. I, I think Still have to play USC, have to play at Arizona State. I think it might have been had Vernon Adams State help. Yes. And that's obviously hanging over this Oregon team is Jeff Lockie. Now it's his turn. Touchdown or bust. Freeman. Piled up. Does manage to get a yard, maybe two. And again, that's the point for Oregon. They still have to play at Arizona State at Stanford. They still have Cal and USC coming here. Civil War is here this year. Freeman got outside. Well, oh, that's coming back, though. They got outside because they're saying Doug Brenner did a little too good a job there blocking. The hit was there, and as, as the defender gets under... Holding offense number 57, 10-yard penalty, second down. As the defender wins the leverage battle being under you've got to get your hands up and out just use the weight of your body to fall on them. Oregon offensive line Tyler Johnstone by the way is back out there give him credit because he he got hurt in the fourth quarter he left the field on two different occasions but he's back out there playing left tackle right, Cameron Hunt is back out there at the right guard spot but Brenner is in at the left guard spot for Pearson so it's second down Line to gain is the 15-yard line. Can Freeman get him some of that back? Yes, he can. And here's where it's tough. If you if you don't feel as if you can go down the field with the football with Jeff Lackey, that first down penalty really puts you back. Yes. So again, remember, this is overtime, so it's four downs. So two plays to get 11 yards for Oregon. Addison motion. Lockie looking at Addison. Lockie going to run himself. No, he's not going to get very much. And the Oregon Ducks now are getting pushed to where Washington State has been several times. The first time today, Oregon has a make or break play. Jeremiah Allison, great job of wrapping up on a tackle. A lot of the difference in this game on both sides, the scoring plays, the long runs, has been the inability by both teams to tackle cleanly. You'll see the line to gain. It is the 15-yard line. That's where Oregon has to get to stay alive on this play. Lockie hit from behind. Throws in desperation. And Washington State has come to Eugene and shot the Ducks. There are a lot of the Washington State players going over and we're taunting the bench area of the Ducks. A lot of emotions in this game, obviously. A bit of pressure. Jeff Lockie cannot step into that throw. There's Mike Leach and Joe Salavea, the D-line coach. That is some win for Mike Leach and Washington State. Jill? Thank you so much, Coach. Double overtime. How did your team pull this one out? Uh, good win for our guys. I thought we played extremely hard. We played, uh, we talked about playing for 60 minutes, so then we played even longer than that. So we, we did a good job of that. And so I'm, I'm really proud of the effort of our guys. Uh, I thought it was uh, at times a little easier than we made it, but it was a very gutsy performance by us. And I, uh, and I really appreciate the effort of our players. You were able to make plays when you really needed to. What was the, what was the biggest factor in, in being able to stay on the field late in the game? 
uh, playing together, everybody pushing one another to, to play together, which we didn't completely, but uh, certainly did some good things and then stuck in there and didn't let uh, any distraction or disappointment uh, affect us. You started the season with a loss. Now you come in here to Austin Stadium and beat the Ducks here on their home field. How, is your, how far has your program come since, since the beginning of the season? Uh, we've improved. We've got to improve a lot more, but we've improved. Thank you so much. Congratulations. All right, thanks. Ted, up to you. I would say so. Luke Falk completed 50 passes today. 50 completions for 505 yards and five touchdowns. Well, this conference, Pac-12 North, is so stunningly different. Stanford, two road wins, and Oregon now has two home losses. Thanks to this last-second regulation touchdown catch by Dom Williams. With one second remaining, that sent the game to overtime. And there, it is Washington State that prevails in the second OT. Thanks to our entire Pac-12 crew for a terrific afternoon and evening in Eugene. With Glenn Parker and Jill Savage, I'm Ted Robinson. Hope you enjoyed this great one in Eugene. Now to Tempe, Colorado, and Arizona State.